Okay, so in this problem, we have a mass <coughs> on a slope. And the angle which, with which the slope uh, mix with the horizontal is theta. And so we have a few forces. Now, I've already kind of labeled or drawn them, but this one is going to be our normal force. This one is going to be the force down the slope. But essentially, you know, if you think about it, um, this, this force here, uh, you could say, uh, not specifically down, but along the, um, you know what we can call it? We can call it Fx. Because I'm ch I've changed my x and y axes. Usually x and y axes go like this. But I've changed the axes to represent the angle of the slope. So now, the question, part A, is asking what is uh, the x? Well, in order to find this, it's asking what is Ax. But in order to find this, we need to find this, because this is going to be this. So once we, def once we find this force, then we can simply divide by m and find the acceleration along the slope. Now remember, there's no friction in this case, okay? And so remember what we have to write for our free body diagram. So perhaps I should start again here. Uh, the magic sentence for free body diagram is, okay, we'll, we'll kind of draw it like that, but we're gonna put our forces here. So what's touching it plus gravity? So the only thing touching this box right now is this wedge or this slope. And the only force possible from this slope, since there is no friction, is a perpendicular force. And we'll call that the normal force because it is perpendicular to the surface. And that's the only thing touching it. And so then we could say, all right, finish the sentence. What's touching it plus gravity? So gravity is going to go down like that, mg. Um, now, I may have actually you know, drawn that too big, so we can make this one bigger too. But now, what we need to figure out is, OK, so I know this is a right angle triangle. I'm trying to work out the angles here. Because I know that there is going to be a component here. So perhaps I can use a different color. Let's try with red. So there's a component like this, and there is a component like this, which makes up mg. So these two red vectors, force vectors, sum to give me mg. Uh, and also remember, if I go back to black here, the sum of the forces in the y direction must equal, <coughs> must equal 0 because it's this, right, m a y, and I know a y is 0. Why is a y 0? Because the, the mass is not accelerating in, you know, in, in this plane. It's accelerating in this plane. So that means that if I kind of draw, that means this and this, these two forces are equal and opposite. Okay? Now, what about the angles? So, if I kind of think about right angle triangles, right? That means that, let, let's write theta and phi. This one's theta and this one's phi. Then these two are complementary angles, right? They both add up to 90 degrees. The other thing I know is that this is a 90 degree angle because this is a 90 degree angle, right? And therefore, this is a 90 degree angle. I'll kind of draw it big here. So that means that the complement of a complement, right? That means this is theta. See? Right? Because the complement of theta is 
phi, or phi, whichever way you want to call it. It's like Greek symbol. It goes like this. And um, therefore, this is in, as a complement to this angle. So therefore, this must be theta, must be equal to this theta here. So, okay, well, that means we can now, if we know that the hypotenuse is mg, therefore, we can calculate the two legs. This one here is mg cosine theta, and this one here is mg sine theta. And in fact, this one here, the mg sine theta one, is along, I can move this vector uh, to be acting, you know, on the mass. It doesn't have to be acting way down here. All of these are acting on the mass. So if I was to draw it again, okay, here is the slope, here is my mass. So essentially I have, and I can put them in the center too, I have Fn and I have this way mg cosine theta and I have this way mg sine theta. Okay? So essentially mg cos theta and mg sine theta add up to mg which is going straight down. Okay? Notice that since my the sum of the forces here in the y direction are equal to zero, well how many forces do I have in the y direction? Also the y positive direction is positive in that direction. So I could say therefore completing this equation here, I could say Fn minus mg cos theta is equal to zero. Right? Because this and this have to cancel each other. So that what that provides me with is that it provides me with Fn is equal to mg oops uh, cosine theta. Okay? But in addition, we go back up to here because we have no friction, that means that this force was Fx, okay? And so therefore, I could say, all right, well, the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to max. And there is only one force, max. And that force is uh, mg sine theta equals max. I can cancel out my m's, and I get g sine theta as the acceleration along the slope. So that's how that's how that's the acceleration of it going down slope. Okay? And so that is part A. Okay? So we'll put down A here. Okay, so the next question, part B, asks if the block was starting up here and it says starts at a from rest 12 meters up the plane from its base what will the blocks what, what speed will it reach at the bottom of the incline so essentially what we've got is we've got okay you know from here to here is 12 meters and um, we're asking for the final velocity at the bottom where the initial velocity is zero. So this is a really simple problem now because we've done all the hard work. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to say um, v final squared equals uh, 2a delta d plus vi squared. And so we've got everything that we need here to calculate v final. So we're just going to go v final is equal to the square root of 2 times. Now the acceleration we know is g sine theta. And uh, delta d is 12. And vi is just 0, so I can leave it off. 
Now, the one thing I forgot to write down, even for part A, was the given angle theta that was 20 degrees. So for this one, part A, it'd be uh, 9.8 times sine 20 uh, equals, so this one was 3.35 uh, meters per second squared. And then for this one, uh, let's give us ourselves a little bit more room here. And so we're going to get the square root of 2 times 9.8 times uh, sine 20 uh, times 12. And that's going to give us, so that's uh, 8.99 or just 9. Uh, meters per second. Okay, so that's the end of that problem.